So before we start this week's podcast, I just wanted to say one quick thing. We were having some real major issues around our internet connections last night, uh, me especially. And unfortunately, as I'm the one who records the session, if the internet goes down, um, then there's not a lot you can do to recover certain parts of it. So I think we've got a really good podcast out of it nonetheless. But there may be some rather strange moments uh, that appear a bit stilted uh, or it may appear that we've had the conversation before mainly because we did uh so yeah and it's a bit of a feisty one this week so uh buckle up and uh enjoy hello and welcome to this week's uh photography podcast this week is number 23 Three. i think yeah 23 so uh hope you guys are all well uh we're all here this week james is not late um I was early. Well, the, yeah. early. We, we did ask we did ask a couple of big names to come on because we had a bit of a running joke about boris's rule of six and what have you but they haven't turned up so uh you know if, if they, well there is but i'm not holding my breath um anyway what we've what we've been up to this week guys anything exciting but if they turn up now how are we going to work that joke in when we chuck them off oh, I mean, it might work next week as well <laughs> Well, I'll be honest with you. Any, anybody I think big, you just kill that joke uh, now, get it? Any, yeah, any, yeah, just yeah, just yeah. 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 We, 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 it. Now. We've, about it. Mally oh, has organised right. this. She's been spent all week organising it, Surprise and you've you killed it in the intro. They've got the the login and password now, so they could do it any week. They they might be watching us. <laughs> oh, do you really do think? Anyway, do, you re- do you really think that anybody <laughs> yeah. of any name or any importance is yeah. going to come on here? Come yeah. on. Seriously, yeah, I reckon they I will. Seriously, do I do? I seriously believe that. Yeah. Well, I tell Absolutely. you what. I tell you what. I'm going to put out. I'm going to put out a little message here. If anybody, if anybody with more than a hundred thousand subscribers is watching this right now, <laughs> why don't you pop on the channel next week? Get in contact with Mally because you you probably know Mally already anyway. Get in contact with Mally and uh, and and come on next week and then we can boot you off. How's that sound? Is that, is that good? <laughs> Markham yeah. and Wise style, though, in good yeah. taste. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, that's Kenny Everett style, isn't it? Oh, yes, that's <laughs> well, right. I can't spin my legs. Taste. I can't spin my legs. <laughs> oh, Any, my squirrel, on, my on, squirrel's James. getting it. Where? He's, he's doing it. Go on, go on, James. Go on, James, lad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that, that would have been the best the ever. I didn't know I had then. <laughs> anyway, what have we been up to this week? Anybody? Nothing. I'm not looking. Yeah. Oh, not much really. Looking no. forward to James being Kenny Everett all week. Oh. Big hand. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, we hope you've enjoyed this week's podcast. <laughs> We'll all see you. In <laughs> yeah. We've had a we'll flat, boring week. Yeah. We'll all see you next week. We've got I must admit, to something that Mally said the other day when we kind of met up about people having small heads. I do <laughs> look like I have a small head here. You I was need, just you looking need at sit it. Sit up, Darren. Sit yeah, up. Sit up. I, no, you need to get a cushion. No, Darren. this is really nice. This is. Hey, eh? I'm good, John. You cushion. Yeah. Get a get a rubber ring. No, I, I'm really. Look, if I sit up, look, this is too. Uh, there's Darren. Yeah, very royally. Yeah. I do have a, a right Thank size you. head. Hello? Uh, hello? <laughs> this <laughs> week on the photography hello? podcast. <laughs> yeah, hello? <laughs> I can't get up now. Oh, it's mm-hmm. quite comfy, this, actually. Yeah, I see. I Mind you, your head looks massive now. It does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jabber the hook. Oh for anyone thinking of starting a, a, a podcast or a vlogcast, this is what or happens. Subscribing. This is this is this is this is what happens after you run out of ideas. <laughs> Essentially, this is where you get to. This is the I do, point. I do look forward to it though, because I get cheered up on a Friday night. You know, you've had a crap week at work, and then you get cheered up with Mally doing stuff like that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, kids. Ready for your. So anyway, closer. what's our first topic? Uh, what's in Darren's box? Ooh. <gasps> oh. So I'm what's like in the guessing game? Yeah. Yes or no? So give us some, give us some very, give us a bit around it, Darren. What's happened? Why have you got a box? What's going on? Without telling us what's in it. Okay. Well, as you guys know, that over the last kind of year and stuff, I've been selling my 
astrophotography gear. And I must admit, at the moment, the photography fund is looking very healthy. Ooh. So, but I'm not rushing to buy things for the sake of buying it. But let's put it this way. The money is, is there for, for, for when I kind of need it. But I what it I wanted to do was, when I do buy something, I want to buy some quality stuff. I'm trying to say something without actually saying it. So what I'm trying to buy is good quality gear. So I don't I know bought, what it is. I bought, is it well, a Canon R6? So I bought something this week that I think is is good quality. Is it a filter from KNF? No. <laughs> a tripod from KNF. Uh, he's warm. He's what, warm, what, Darren. What was what did he say? Is it a tripod? No. But box. I know what it is. What? And I don't know how. Can you twiggle a knob on it? You can. I know what it is. Ah, Go on. I know what it is. It's, Go on. it's one of the, I forget the names, it's a little time-lapse machine thing for astrophotography, isn't it? No. What? It's a ball no. head. Oh, what am I thinking about? A ball he's, head? He's got a ball, a ball head. head. Oh, get in there, <laughs> lad! <laughs> we could, you don't we could win have a had, prize. <laughs> we could have had ten minutes. Ten minutes of quality podcast there, Mally. Oh, You've ruined it. You've absolutely ruined it. <laughs> I'm okay. Look at what you could have won. <laughs> Ma- Mally got so too premature then. <laughs> is, it, is, all... it a, is it a git so? No. It's an no. FHM. FHM? FHS a magazine, F- isn't it? F- F- you know, what are they called? <laughs> <laughs> FHM. It's That's F- what you used to read. It's a lads mag from the 80s, isn't it? Yeah. Great enough. Oh, what are they called? Um, I know exactly what you mean. You do, American. don't you? North American. Yeah, American. Yeah. Uh, fine, fat. Oh. Big, big ball head. Nick Page uses one. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Darren, what is it? Oh, Gary knows. I don't know. Is it an F and F? No, wait a minute. That's Tesco's. That's <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's K and F's next line. Yeah. Is it KLF? <laughs> KLM. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, down Do you want me to tell you? Shall I put you out your misery? Yeah, please, this yeah. is the right, so it's the. Uh... Well, this is awkward. Everyone's frozen. This is it. It's the really right stuff. Ball head. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Well played, well played, well played. <laughs> Why no. not a git so, Darren? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done that again. Um, <laughs> it went much better in rehearsals. <laughs> it did. <laughs> right, so very, very quickly. <laughs> Gary, are you paying attention to this? Because you're the only one that needs to listen to this. I'm unbelievably switched on. Um, right, so because I follow Morton Hilmer, do you, do you watch Morton Hilmer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. a wildlife, wildlife photographer. Guy. Wildlife yes. photographer, yeah. yeah. But he's yeah. got three types of tripod head, doesn't he? I've heard some well, he, 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 he has, has died. Fluid. Yeah. fluid. We're so more learned now. Yo, I, honestly, you guys are just such on yeah. the ball. Should we just explain what's we're happening? Just, yeah, just yeah. explain. Just yeah. explain. Just in case anyone's wondering why this conversation has suddenly gone so surreal, halfway through <laughs> the conversation about Darren's ball head, my internet died completely, which meant that I wasn't recording anything. These guys didn't realise, and they've been having a conversation for the last 15 minutes about Darren's tripod, and a uh, tripod ball head, head. And, now we're, ball ball head. Head, and now we're ball all going head. through it again. So just pretend that we none of this has happened, and we're all just, it's all fresh. So right. carry on. Martin Helmer, three ball heads. Three really? ball heads. Okay. Well, he's, yeah, as, as James quite rightly said, he's got a, uh, a fluid head, a gimbal and this particular ball head and even though he uses the fluid head near enough all the time he actually said if he could only ever take one with him he would use this this ball head and because I know obviously Nick Page as well uses it for landscape photography I just thought that this would be a really good ball head so I can use it for both you know on the some of the smaller lenses and on the, the on the bigger lenses as well so I just figured that this was this was going to be the uh, the ball head for me, and as I said earlier, whether it went in, I'm not too sure. But you know, I've got a bit of money because of the Astro stuff, so I want to buy some 
good quality gear. But as I was explaining, Gal, and this is going to be a, a shock to you, the price of this was four hundred pounds. <gasps> I've not finished yet. You come in too early. He always comes in too Just early. Four hundred pound, including. <gasps> Oh, Jimmy! Jesus! You never Sorry. mean that. <laughs> Sorry. Four hundred pounds, including shipping. <gasps> shipping. Oh, you like no. Uncle Albert. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, I bought it two weeks ago. Nothing arrived, and then when I kind of emailed really right stuff to say like, where is it? They said, oh, we have sent it, and they sent me uh, the link to UPS. And when I clicked on the link. I had to pay another £104 for import tax. So this now is actually a £500 ball head. That is shocking. Wow. Still shocking. Second well, time Well, Second I time am, yeah. I'm actually genuinely shocked because I haven't heard it the first time round. Well, you see, if you take Bloody away the hell. import tax and if you take away the, the shipping costs, I'm guessing this is probably retailing in America for probably 330 quid. What model is it, Gary? Do you know what type, what model it is? Is it on the side there? Gary, you're me. Oh, I don't know, Darren. mate. I, have, no, I don't Darren. have it. <laughs> Darren. It's the, it's the B8. Oh, James. Oh. Well, you're not paying attention, Gary. Come on. James, James <laughs> is locking up now. It's Come the on. BH55. No, you're all right. FH55. Oh, yeah. BH, 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 the ball head. BH. James is going to find it on Amazon now. So, it's actually, it's advertised quid. here. 580 pet. Oh, wait a minute. Did you get... I think you get a full private yacht with that. No. Five hundred and eighty pounds here. Five hundred and eighty? Yeah, yeah and just and, and, and you oh, get this is free, making this is you, making me feel better. Keep going, James. You get a free we're workshop with Nick Photo Price. Page, specialist. The really right stuff BH fifty five L R uh plus B two A S two A R. Okay, so there's two uh, different yeah. types. Yeah, B2 there's, SAR, this, yeah. there's this oh, one. one here with the yeah. with the knob and then there's one yeah. with the clamp and the clamp was more expensive. But I didn't want the clamp. I I like to the knob. I like to twist me nuts. I'll tell you what, that's a big knob. Yeah, it's a big old <laughs> knob. An expensive knob, knob, isn't it? It's a it's big price. That, now be gentle with Darren. There's no need calling that. You have like a winch Look on it or that. something. So what, what? Why is it worth five hundred quid? What? What's? Come on, sell it to me, it. Darren. Why are you paying? Well, don't money sell it. So I just got it. Well, I. <laughs> <laughs> I just it was uh, modelled and based on Spock's own ball sack. <laughs> Back to Darren. <laughs> so Darren, why is it worth five hundred quid? Come well, on. I don't, I don't know if it is. I mean, okay. seriously, I mean, but, but, so I, why, I, why I was, would you, why would I, you pay? You said earlier on it's quality. So define quality then. What? What's well, well, first of all, then? I thought it was it was worth four hundred pound for what I want to use it for, because you know. I must admit that, that you can you can feel the the quality of it, and it is going to be very smooth. If I'm trying to track a bird on on the uh, on the tripod, that's is for anything sure. that small worth four hundred pound? Five hundred. No, he said it's worth four hundred pound for what I'm going to use it for. Well, I think, yeah, yeah, but if you're well, smoothly tracking birds, it's worth it. I wish yeah. I had it when I was eighteen. Is that a crap? No, well, I'll tell so you what well, it was as well. I mean, my my. My uh, Manfrotto ball head, that's just, it was just Pumps. annoying me so much. Every time I went out, every time I it framed slid. up and I locked it up, <coughs> everything would drop. Mine started you know. to do that, funny enough, Darren, yeah. <sighs> yeah and yeah. I just knew that it was time, you know. So I was actually going to get a git It's an age thing, isn't it? When you go, <coughs> it happens. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Th 38 quid. Mm. Yeah. I've got to say, my father-in-law's got a Gitso gimbal head. Because I, I, had, I had a cheap gimbal head and I, I looked at them and thought they are... Because I was thinking, birds in flight, gimbal head, excellent, great idea. I went to use this cheap one I bought and it was a nightmare. But he's got this this Gitso one and it was about 350, 400 quid. And it's got a little... It's it's unbelievably good. I've got to say, it's really, really very good. Oh, the quality. It gets absolute quality. Yeah. Okay, what you yeah. Really it's, very it's not what you get. not the end of the world. But like, I've got... There's another bolt kind of in here because that came apart, and then this little clip here, Ooh. you know, that keeps sticking, and then I can't. Sometimes I, I can't get the yeah. I have not Gary. told you, not told you, have I? I oh. put me seventy to two hundred on the collar, on my tripod. 
right? Locked it up, walked away, looked back like that, ah, and it was just tipping. And I went over and just picked it up off my tripod. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. How it didn't fall off, I do not know. I just hadn't. Were you saying the clip on the man yeah. that like groove? It didn't. It didn't tag on. No, it was just. It was just like tilted. But then they're quite, they're known for being a bit iffy, aren't if, they? If mm. if anyone is it anyone it's happened in the past? Is it anyone would have done a, a you know an actual video on explaining what happened? That would have been helpful. That, that's what it? we mm. need. Mm. Somebody good. should mm. make you know the effort to do that. Because oh, if they did, a, a they would be something video. of a hero. <laughs> Link above. You'll be up there with me. <laughs> right up there. On my watch list. I, I'm, I'm lost here. I don't know what you're talking about, but someone I watch somewhere. it once a week. Darren's, Darren's ball head, and I think James's ball head. I had that ball head, and it cost me... Yes, you do. It cost me my camera, because or my, my lens, because oh. the clip didn't didn't engage properly Got you. and it fell off the tripod head and into the water smashed everything up and yeah and I, and I put a video out about it and Manfrotto picked it up mainly because I tagged them into everything <laughs> Twitter hashtag you know Manfrotto watch this Manfrotto watch this. and they that picked it up mm. and they agreed actually that there was an issue with that particular <gasps> that particular model uh, that particular item if you want not 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 the range just the, just my one unit and they agreed and that's how i got my nice kitso ball head because they kindly sent me a new lens to replace the one that that got broke and they sent me they offered me a new one of those and i was like uh, no or a gitso and i said i'll have the gitso thank you very much oh, that's fantastic why do i not know this gitso uh, part of my proto, aren't you they? don't watch his yes. vlogs do you you need to make another video gary this was years ago, to be fair. Ah, oh, well, they'll appreciate it. But um, one thing I'm quite pleased about, because I can jo- join James in the uh, the ball bag club. Oh, when you, yes. When you put the that's little a, bag on top of the... Made it. Look at that, That'll look at that. Keep it warm, can, Yeah. It. Keep it warm See? and moist. Only me and James have got the little ball bag. Yeah. Ball I could get bag. one of those really easily. I'll just go out to me golf clubs. Yeah, and pull the cover yeah. from me driver. It's not the same, though, is it? it. No, I, I, I must admit, I'd, I'd appreciate a bit of input here, guys, because purely for landscapes, I'm toying with the idea of getting a geared head rather than using the yeah, ball ben, head. Yeah, Ben Row do a fantastic yes. yeah. geared. The, geared. I don't know yeah. what the, the Ben Row one that's black with the blue flashing on it. Yeah, that's the one. Twisty, that, twisty, yeah, twisty. Totally that, twisty. A guy came in who I can't remember what his name is, but a guy came into our camera club who does a lot of um, uh, like urban shoots in old, decayed and de- uh, decrepit buildings. He's on YouTube, actually. I, I've said this before, I can't remember his name. But he, he had it with him, and he, and he was sort of saying, you know, how you can you can be so accurate with it, yeah. and you can get it exactly where you want it. And it's not expensive, either. It's only about 100 no, 170 quid. Yeah, mm. yeah, which isn't bad. But I, the so. thing is, I can't run to it at the moment, because I just... I just blown fifteen hundred quid on an iPad Pro for a bit of processing, Ooh, so it'd, lovely. I'd have to Did take you get a the bit pen of time. as well? I actually, as it happens, I've got the pen. I'm still waiting on the iPad, oh. <laughs> so I hope it comes. Otherwise, this is no use. <laughs> you want to check customs? It might still be in customs. It's been known uh, apparently, but it is the the iPad Pro is an eye watering amount of money. The thing with the gear head, David. Um, the thing with the gear head is what I, I had a go one one uh, was just Gary said the precision but do you know you, 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 you need to do something in particular at this certain moment in time and, and as we all know in, in landscape if you're getting a starburst for instance across a mountain just that little touch little touch and you can track it and just little touch little touch take a shot little touch and that starburst or the moon you're on the moon, it's moving. You're, you're at the s- 600 mil, and it's just a little tickle, little tickle, little tickle, and you're just following that moon, and there's none of this, oh, shh, I've moved, you know, with a ball in. It's just that little touch, little t- Fantastic for Astro. It, 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 well, they it's not, so they've got the, the uh, traction control, haven't they? Yeah, but there's something about, you, I think it's more to, yeah, sorry, I think it's uh, it's got a click on it as well. So you can feel it. 
and with the moon as I found out myself with a ball head just having that control to just um, and manipulate it and get it moving with it you get sharp and you I'm not, I don't know I've not used a git saw uh, geared uh, with a with the ball head to do that but I have used a geared uh, the Benro and it was f- for the moon shots class class I can definitely see the appeal of it I did yeah, think about I can. one myself I can the only trouble for me is that it's it's heavy. My current ball head is a 20 quid cheap Chinese knockoff Amazon uh, and it only weighs about 120 grams. Yeah. Whereas the, the Benro geared is thick end of two kilos by itself. Good God. So Please. that is the main reason I haven't sprung for it as yet. I don't think I will. I, I, do, I probably won't because traveling light is more important than being that precise on the images. Yeah. Well, the the fluid head, the the, the Manfrotto fluid head, that was quite cheap. That's about hundred and seventy pound, but they're huge. Mm. They're monsters. They really are. But it that is that is really good for wildlife photography. But it's it's really good for videoing as well. Yeah. Well, I've got I a fluid head do. for video. I, I I thought I'd have really a go at smooth. that, and I enjoyed using it. But it's yeah. massive. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. There was a few wildlife photographers. I mean, as I say, Morton Hilmer. Uh, he uses his fluid head all the time because he's videoing as well. There's another guy I, I watch, and he's moved over to a, a fluid head, but they're not Arca Swiss, so you need a different plate for it. Yeah, well. it's and a I bit. It's thought, a bit of a faff. It I've is still a lot got of it. Faff, yeah. But what what I do is if I'm going local and I'm not climbing, I'll take it because when you're shooting B-roll, particularly if you if you've got your telephoto out and you zoomed in on something. I mean, well, I was down at Llandwyn Island and this speedboat went by. And I went in at about 200 millimetres and followed it with a fluid head. And yeah. I used it in the video. It turned out so well. Yeah. Couldn't possibly have got that shot without the fluid head. No. So I'll just use it now and then. I mean, going back to the geared head, I, I'd imagine for me, it would be really difficult to use because when I'm cheating doing those panos, I'd have to <laughs> crank it round and I'd be like, that take one shot. <laughs> And then crank it round for the next shot, so I probably would be. Yeah, but be Gary, you only need no. to do one panel, and you covered everything anyway, so it doesn't matter. That's true. I'd only have to do it once, and then I could just go home, couldn't yeah, I? Exactly. And I could nick it. But when you're che- when you're cheating, Gary, when you're when you're clearly faking it with your yeah. panos, yeah. with a geared head, it's got twin knobs, so the big knob moves it Ooh. substantially. It's a, there's a fine tuning Ooh. knob as well. Is yeah. there an up and down so you, one? Up and down. Yeah. Because then I could cheat in, I could cheat in all axes, couldn't I? This is it. You could just pile it on, and then and then replace the sky. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, this has opened up a whole new world for me. A whole new world. Um, That's quite good. There you Not go. Handled that note well. And welcome to your weekly song that we've managed to get in. Um, Talk, talking of gear, has anybody had has anybody had any new cameras lately? Do they want to share how they're getting on with any new cameras they've had lately? I think there might be. Come on, <laughs> come on, let's see let's it. Up, you know, now now we're now we're all actually let's here. Let's see it. Let's have a look at the little one. Oh. I should tell you really before we go any further that last week we all went off for a toilet break and James did a little piece to video all on his own telling us about his new camera and then just as we got back he hid it all again so you can tell us why we're all here now have you got a new camera James you got a new camera no I've got a new camera (gasps) really tell us about it (gasps) do you know what it is what is it can you guess what it is do you know what it is anyone Sony it's not a Nikon it's a Canon yeah Canon all right, I'll put it out in misery. This is the Canon R6. In my first mirrorless full-frame camera. Um, I took it out first time on Sunday. Ooh, very impressed. Um, first thing I noticed is obviously the weight, the size, and it really, it compares to my, not my previous, but previous camera to that, the 6D. Um, really nice, grippy. Um, but yeah, absolutely excellent. I went for the kit lens as well this is 24 105 it's a non-L version so I'm used to L versions I'm a bit like that am I going to get the same sort of quality but I tell you what the files nice even, even I'd say better than the 5D3 
with really the L lens, with, with an L lens, with a kit lens. No, with this lens. With this yeah, lens no, no. Kit, then non- are you saying that those yes. files are better than the five D three with an L lens? Yeah, I'd say that. I'd say so. Have you tried yeah. it with the L lens? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. So I'm, I'm comparing the five D three with the L lenses on to what this reads now, and zooming in the detail, um, dynamic range, which I'd expect anywhere. Hmm. Um, have you tried your seventy to, to telephoto? Have you tried? No, I, I, am, I haven't got the adapter. Oh. oh, so what I'm doing? I know Dave mentioned it earlier about going lightweight and lightweight is obviously important. For a while, I'm just going to stick with this setup. Yeah, I haven't got the uh, 200 millimeters. It's 24 to 105, but I tell you what, it's still a decent range. It's still, you know. Oh, you're going to miss that range. telephoto, James. I might do. Um, my plan is RF lenses. I'm going to build up a collection of RF lenses. My plan is to get the F4 versions yeah. of the 7200 and the 16, 1535. So at the moment, I've got 2.8. I'm just, I'm just going to use them. So I'm going to work. They're not out yet. But I'll tell you what, really, really impressed. I had to go at the uh, video capabilities as well. As you know, it's got inbuilt image stabilization, played around with 4K. Um, I mentioned to Gary that I can't really take advantage of the 4K yet because my laptop uh, couldn't handle the file sizes. So when I was rendering the video, it just wasn't working at all. But I've got myself a new lap- laptop as well, so hopefully. So your idea is you're going to use it for video and stills, James? Yeah. yeah. So are you yeah. going to ditch your M50 or are you going to still use your M50 I for video? I thought about that, to be honest, but it's... I'm used to having two cameras. So. Have you Peter McKinnon? Do you, have you held it like that yet? And yeah, I have. And and the image bit. So what was the video like? Was it good? As I say, I can't. I haven't played in that kit because it, the the laptop I currently have is struggling. Oh, so you fit? Ah, oh, gee, get it in 1080 and hold it out there and see what oh. Ibis is like. I need. To play oh, it'd be it. exciting to see that to see what you get because. You're talking there about no need for a vlogging camera. You could da- use that. That, that was my Everything. that was my idea about changing my camera was to just Do be able to All vlog. Yes, I can do that. Yeah. Yes. The trouble is though, and we've talked about this before, but the trouble is, is if you're taking a shot and you want to talk through what you're taking, you can't exactly. take the That's camera why off. That's I'm the, keeping them fifty, get it? Yeah. yeah. You can't take the no, camera yeah. off a tripod and say, uh, "I'm taking." Oh no, no, I'm not actually. Hang on. So yeah, yeah I wouldn't yeah. do that. I never talk. The about only thing I've got to be careful about is um, it's not fully weatherproof, whereas the 5D3 was. It's when you say not fully weatherproof, what I do you mean? You can spit play, on the it. The top end, they can spit on it. Yeah. But I don't want to spit on it. Uh, top end is weatherproof and sealed, but the whole the whole camera body isn't. Not the lens as well. The lens isn't well. No, no, it's not. It's not. But Jeez. what have you bought? I was just being oh God. <laughs> I bought a thing of beauty. Give Mountain Man James there is in the uh, every vlog is probably the worst conditions oh. known to man. <laughs> Eskimos don't go through weather as bad as you. I bought you know, I bought some shower caps though. So oh, the yeah, right. that that'll be real. Yeah. I that'll tell you what, I, I bought a firm um, after. I bought one of those things, you know, where you slip your hands in it and you yeah. can take the shots and it covers it. It's a nightmare. Yeah. It's an absolute Forget nightmare it. to use. Just don't even don't even bother. Just I would rather risk just getting wet. Because yeah, you, you shower you, cap will you, do it. To be fair, right, my M50 has seen a fair bit of weather, and that's yeah, not no. weatherproof at all. No. Still working. You know why, don't you? You take care of it. It's a cannon. It's a cannon. Give it all. Give it all. I think the thing is, when you first buy a Never camera, you're, you're really careful with it, aren't you? You're like, oh, I mustn't, I mustn't get it wet, and I mustn't, even though it says it's weather... But I don't know about your A7R three, Darren. You've been out in weather with it and had any issues? No, I don't go out in the rain with that. Do you not? Just no, in case. I open the front door. If there's a little bit of mist in the air, I just shut the front door again and stay <laughs> home. <laughs> yeah. That'd be interesting to see. Actually. It will just explode like a clown's car. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye. Actually, if anyone if anyone owns uh, an R six, so if we've got any rich people in the house. Or if uh, if anyone owns like a Sony A7R three, you can't say shit. You can't say nothing about an R six, Mister Sony man. Yeah, Two of you. Yeah, yeah. If anyone Come owns on. if anyone owns an R six, or if anyone owns a Sony A7R three, and have any experience of using it in weather, 
let us know because you know we're all let, frankly we're scared I'll we? just buy just buy a D750 Nikon and forget the weather and you'll be fine well that's the one thing I will say about Canon the, the 5D3 and probably the 5D4 Jamie I don't know but they are tanks now, in terms of weather Absolutely. sealing they are you, I mean I got again, mine again, so wet again Gary Sony yeah oh no just I think the thing it's is with the Sony, there was, there was a few issues with that, which I think that I've, I mean, I'm joking aside, I think I've overcome because I've got a small rig L bracket, which is a good kind of half an inch thick. So, you know, if you if you was to put it down on the wet grass or something, it's not going to seep into the battery door. But the, the main thing, I think, was actually the hot shoe. A lot of people were taking out the little plastic cover from the hot shoe, and that was if it was getting wet, it was it was shorting. Yeah. So yeah. I just kept that in, and that's fine. But no, joking aside, I haven't gone out in torrential rain. I went out with my Canon in 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 really bad conditions. I'm not saying I'm not taking the Sony out. I've just not been out in bad conditions when since I've had the Sony. But so far, touch wood, I've had no issues with it. Yeah, I think I think to be fair, somebody did a teardown of the Sony, and the only issue is that where the battery, uh, where the battery flap is, and like you say, I've got a small rig like yours, and it's about sort of it's a good inch, and it, it, yeah. I think it gives you plenty of protection anyway. Yeah, and I can't imagine that the, with the Canon that they would build all of that weather sealing into exactly. their five D three and five D four and not have the same level in no. their expensive mirrorless cameras. You know, of course no. they would. The effort by another one. Ah, oh, rubbish. Yeah. You old cynic. We're consumerist society. Get your R6 and then next year you'll have to buy another one. I had, a, I had a 6D for a couple of years. Again, out in all kinds of weather. Again, no issues. And that's similar to what the R6 is. So. Ah. So, what, what as you as Gary says, it's, it's, it's because it's a new camera. I'm obviously a bit yeah. protective. What, why, but, is it, uh, why is the 6D, why is the Canon 6D looked upon as such a poor relation? to the five Ds. Are you you've got experience. I mean, I know we're moving subject here, but uh, whenever I, I, I hear the word six D, I think budget. And whenever I hear cameras. the word five D, I, I think I've got, full frame. Full frame. Full frame. I've got I've yeah. got full I've got the answer to that. Yeah. I've got the answer to that. And it's exactly the same modelling as Nikon. So you've got the eight eight series, the eight hundred series, you've got the seven hundred series. With Canon you add the six your six rebel and then your five Ds, and the the smaller, the six D smaller. Yeah. It's smaller to hold. It's slightly smaller body, slightly lighter. But then you go to the five D, and it's a, it's more of a pro. It's the weatherproofing. More of a pro the status. Is the sensor is the sensor and the processor? I mean, I know we're getting. They're the same. The, they're, the, they're, they're, they're the same, same sensor and processor on the two. I think right? the six D is is just a smaller frame, and it's aimed at it. it it's matching brand for brand. The, the the battle that's gone on until Sony has obliterated the market. Um, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Touch of the yeah. old. Uh, we won't say it. Right, I, I have to say though if I would have because obviously I've moved over to Sony but if the R6 would have been out when I was looking to change I would have stuck with Canon because looking at the specs on them two Canons I think they're fantastic cameras Yeah, and, I was, and, and the R5 as well I mean the weather scene on that is meant to be absolutely superb so I think I think Canon have really rescued themselves with these two with these yeah. two oh, cameras groundbreaking the, the because R5 because before is, that they was just that's why I moved because I don't know where they was going Canon I will say though as well that the, the, the I don't know what the, what is the R5 I don't know what the megapixels are on the R5 but the R6 4, is 43 44 the R6 is, is, is 24 right the same as no 20 20 20 so is it, is it like it's, a backward it's, step or no it's no no it's not because the sensor itself uh, it's from the one DX Mark III so the quality of the sensor itself is it's mm, interlaced triceptical RGB flux capacitor melt Correct. pot 572 oh, flux like capacitor that. yeah okay. mm. I agree so, with that yeah yeah, yeah. It's interesting though. Maybe that maybe there's a that, there's a thing in there that megapixels aren't the most important thing. No, no, no. But, but they they're, well, they're, they're always they're always marketed as the most important thing, aren't they? 
you know and like, like I've, I've I've had experience now of the Sony a7 III and the a7R 3 and I can tell you that the a7R 3 even though it's an older camera has way more detail in than Sony a7 III and the megapixels are higher so it, mm. I'm putting two and two together saying there, there must be something in the megapixels there is be. something about seeing an you, image from you a can GFX. use more noise the, the, the larger the sensor as well don't forget well you've only the, got to look at the, the, the top end if you look at Canon's top end the one DX Mark III. I mean, what is that? Is that is that just over twenty megapixels? So, so what I'm saying, it's same as the. And A6. if you if you look same at Sony, the A7, yeah, the, the A9 II, that's yeah. twenty four megapixels. So you're looking at two cameras there that are five grand plus, and they're still in the twenty. Sensors. So, but then you can start getting to the Sig Sigma Forvian sensor. Is it Forvian? I think that's the name of it where the the mixing the the red green and blues and the way that the handling pixels and then when you see the red gfx yellow, um, the gfx blue, uh, fuji uh, uh, medium format and then you do see images from hasselblad has anyone seen the images that james bell took of uh, of mark yeah, but um, I like to say more close because yeah, but that's outstanding. They, they look so. so God, I'm not good. sure I'd want to see a picture of Mark McNeil up close. No, the beast. <laughs> no, there isn't. Oh, of course the I beast. love you, Mark. By the way, that's just. A At joke. least he looked happy. What What I'm <laughs> saying it for is that there is a standout jump, isn't there, in in, in image quality for medium format, and that is a bigger sensor and more pixels. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. something in it. I've killed it, haven't I? Yeah. Well, Next topic. <laughs> moving on, moving on. So uh, I can't remember what we were going to talk about. What were we going to talk about? YouTube. You, oh, okay. So YouTube, um, is YouTube dying when it comes to landscape photography vlogs? This is one from you, Darren. Uh, not tutorials. We're not talking YouTube tutorials. We're talking about actual landscape photography vlogs. Why do you think that? Why Why did you ask that question? Well, I think I just think because there's talk like if you're talking about like landscape photography vlogs there are one there is so many people doing it now and has say the novelty for viewers worn off a little bit because i have noticed that a lot of people's channels are getting perhaps lower views than they once did not saying on you know some videos may, may may go up may you know but on the whole is everyone getting the same kind of number of views yeah, I'd say, yeah. but but your Similar. but is your subscriber count yeah. gone up though james obviously yeah man I'm a little really bit yeah happy. slightly i'm very slightly. happy with what i'm doing and and the numbers are just and it's not just that the quality of of remarks and comments i, I actually feel at the minute that youtube is is for me is, it, i'm very happy. It's doing I think it's well. the place to go yeah. at the moment. Yeah. It is. Looking I, for alternatives. I've got a bit of a theory. I've got a bit of a theory myself though, and if 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 subs and views are, or views are going down, I think it may be partly down to the fact that a lot of people watch your vlogs because they're looking for inspiration for places to go. And over lockdown, people couldn't go to those places. So maybe mm. they've switched off from watching your vlogs because they don't need to watch them to get inspiration for where to go because they can't go. And maybe that, I've, I've noticed, and I know that personally, my vlogs went, they changed dramatically between non-lockdown and lockdown. They, they sort of changed, yeah. you know. Yeah, my, and, my yeah and there was a dip. Me. There was definitely a dip. But I'm now coming back up to where mm. I was before. That's because you've so, been a home fan, that's what it is. I've just got to uh, say that, Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, Jamie sat there and he's, he's never had it so good. He's booming. He's booming. Great content. And Dave, Dave out, what do you reckon? Let's, let's, let's bring Mr. Griff in here. What do you reckon, Dave? Good man. Well, I can only talk from personal experience. And to be honest, my views are pretty much where they've always been in terms of percentage of subscribers and uh, you, you know, because my genre is pretty similar. I don't often stick out a, a gear review video or a Q&A or some filler like that. So my stuff is pretty standard and the views are, have held up. So but do, that do, said... Do, do you I'm, watch as as many videos, Dave, now that perhaps that you used to? Or is that, has that changed? Or um, Yes, it has. But I have to say, 
it's an awful lot to do with the intrusive advertising. I can't tolerate it. So I just don't bother with it anymore. All, almost across the board, not just landscape photography, but YouTube in general. I, I can't bear it. You, you're watching something, you're in the moment, and then you're being sold some crap without any warning, without, oh, we're going to a break, time to put the kettle on. It, it's, for me, it's intolerable. Mm. Is that us though? Is that us as a generation? Because we're used to adverts from TV, and the world that we in now, with YouTube consuming, is that you're just going to get hit with adverts. And pretty soon, I think we're not going to have a choice. I think the thing is though, it's a very good point. I watched a video the other day, and it had it was a, it was an I think it was a twenty four minute video, something like that, and it had six mid roll adverts in it, mm-hmm. and that's like what's that twenty four six it's, well, I don't know, it's one every three minutes or something because you, you've got and it's just like it, it kills it you start to watch it and and i know what you're saying manny i know you i know what you're saying i'm not that's just defending life. it no i'm just saying yeah i know i know that's i don't life. agree with it yeah. but i just think that particularly for our, right. for our genre for landscape photography or photography you you want to build you you want to your video you want to build that moment you want to be in it you want it wants to be immersive and as soon as you bring an advert in it it kills it especially especially if you allow youtube to put it in because it, it invariably puts it in in a bit of b-roll or when you're showing the image and it, it just sort of you just think oh the amount of videos i've switched off recently when they've got to the first ad and just gone nah I can't be bothered anymore. But I think it's fair to say that you've got to understand, though, that YouTube aren't stupid. What they will do is they will assess the stats. And bearing in mind it's quite a new thing, I think give it three to six months, they'll look at it and go, Christ, people are switching off at the point where we stuff an advert in unannounced. Will they give a shit? And so, sorry? Will they give a shit? Well, yes, I think they will be forced to because increasingly people are saying, sod it, I'm not watching YouTube. Yeah. And, and so I think it's Good one point. of those things that's counterproductive. It seems like an idea. I think it'll have a shelf life. Um, but in the meantime, mm. I have a real problem with content creators that don't explicitly switch off adverts mid-roll because you can. Oh. Right. Can I, sorry, can I just interject just for a second? I switched mine off as we discussed a couple of um, episodes ago. I switched all my mid-roll ads off. I got a comment this week on a a vlog that I did about 18 months ago. And typically I went back to to comment. I ended up listening to my own vlog from 18 months ago while I was at work. So I thought, oh, this is bringing back memories. Halfway through that video, there was a mid-roll ad. I've switched them all off and they've crept back on. I've not mm. gone through my whole back catalogue. Well, so that happened to no, me. You, but Darren, that's what I was saying a couple of weeks ago. They're yeah. completely ignoring what you're doing unless you say, yeah. I don't want any monetization. My attitude is with my own channel, and I can only speak for myself, I go out and make an effort to make a nice video for people to enjoy. I might off that one video get 10 quid's worth of advertising revenue. It's not worth that for me to spoil people's enjoyment of it. It just isn't. I don't need 10 quid that badly. And so, okay, add it up over my catalogue, 30 or 40 quid a month, 50 quid a month sometimes. You know, in terms of do I pay my bills, do I pay my mortgage, it's not relevant. So I I just switched them off. And and for me, if people are that desperate, they need that amount of money to screw up people's enjoyment of their videos, I just won't watch them. And and I've watched next to no YouTube over the last fortnight. Moving away from sorry. moving away from ads, though. Take, take, let's let's forget about ads because yeah, they sorry, are. They, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I get why you said it, but they they are what they are, and you, you're not going to stop people who, if they want to put ads in. I I kind of get it because for them, if it's about the revenue, putting four or five ads in is four or five times the revenue. So I kind of get that. But do you think that? Because I watch, I used to watch loads and loads of, of different vloggers, and it, it all gets very samey. But the, I don't think that, that was that was my yeah. whole point in raising this question. It wasn't, you know, it was. Be, I think most people, you know, I went through 
you know, like four years of really being kind of intense when it comes to astrophotography. And in the end, I just got so frustrated with the cloud and, you, you know, the amount of money that I spent, I, I canned it. So my interests went from literally being an astro fiend to not doing anything with astro at all. And I just think that perhaps when YouTube, when landscape photography on, on YouTube first come out, it was new, it was fresh, but now it's out there. People's interests do change over time. That was my point. I wasn't saying. I don't know. I, I still think there's an interest, a big interest in landscape photography. I think YouTube is probably the place to go. So I can't really see a dwindling of the numbers. But is it, is, it the, is it the longevity of the, the variety that YouTube can introduce? Because well, you've, people got, select you've got. who they want to watch. Maybe the yeah. higher end are getting more views themselves. I don't know. In terms yeah. of um, adverts, it, it becomes the norm in a way. People are getting used to it. It's just a click away. Yeah, it does need spot people. No, but it isn't, James. I, no, I've got to take issue with you there. It isn't a click away. If you get a double mid-roll advert that are five seconds each, you get ten seconds of Starling Bank and Rise of Warcraft or whatever the shit it's called. And and, and you, can't, you can't skip it. So... You're watching some images, or you're watching some B-roll. This lovely sunrise, it's happening, and you, oh, he's going to get a great image here. I'm really looking forward to. Oh, what, what am I watching a now? Non-skippable that, skip. absolutely. Yeah, no, I agree. exactly. But and we... and so, and at that point, I, I, when they started doing it, at that point, I just stopped watching the video because my attitude was, I now don't care how good your image is. You didn't have the respect to let me watch it without you earning literally point three of a penny. So, stuff you. I'm going to and throw a curve ball in here. Ooh, you ready? Be my guest. I'm still curveball. going to be cross. Are, are you ready? I'm going to jump in between you. Ding, ding. Here we go. Are you ready? No. Oh, We're this not ready. Is good. It's going to be good. A lot, of the, a lot of the videos that have mid roll that mid roll adverts. Now I've got the. I think, can I say it? Have you forgotten? Well, you've got to say it now. The shit. <laughs> <laughs> so they need a bit of content, you mean? They need a bit of filling the they gap. Need, they need it. some herb. You need some ice cream. Herpes. For make the, <laughs> I was the video. Say herpes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> some ice cream. Or they need Warcraft, as Dave said. Oh, do you think that that mid rose has had an impact on viewing figures? Do you think people are purposely not watching YouTube as much now because of mid roll, mid roll adverts? Curveball again. Ah, uh, I was. It's videos. a question. Yes or no? Not not well, curveball. Well, I, I, I can I just say that oh, I. It's not a yes or no. Is it a yes? Or, how can it be a that. yes or no? Black how can it be a yes or no? What about what about if your videos getting pushed more because you've got adverts? It's not a yes or no. You put adverts on, YouTube are going to show your video more. All, yes I, know, no? all I know is that I'm, I'm not watching advert. I'm not watching videos. Yes or no? Freudian slip. I'm not watching videos that, that have got loads of adverts in. I'll start to watch them, and as soon as I come to the first advert, I'm like, oh, for God's sake, I'll switch it off. This, yeah. see, I think that's a good thing, because I, what I was going to say was, if I'm on the fence with a video, if there was no adverts, I might kind of, persist with it a little bit this might get a little bit better if an advert comes up then i think oh that's a good time just to stop the video so i think sometimes unless a video really grabs my attention when that mid-roll ad comes up i normally cut off at mm. that point it depends how it's tell you, you are as well i tell you what Florence. i'm doing yeah my yeah. my enjoyment of landscape photography over the last three or four weeks and for the foreseeable future will continue in this vein I've I've loaded up the RSS feeds from places like F Stoppers and Petapixel in, in a, a, a a reader. I would rather sit and read some articles and and look at a picture, outdoor photographer and various landscape sites, and an image comes up and they, there's some text around it and they talk about it and you can enjoy that image for as long as you want, and and no Ken Burnsing, just an image. 
and some words. And frankly, it's kind of grown up and I'm quite enjoying it. Don't forget um, the strip adverts, though, and the banner adverts that pop up. And no, then the video no, adverts that pop uh, up. No, Mally, an RSS feed strips all that out. It's just the text and the images. Uh, com- coming away, yeah, though. They com- do on the listen, website. coming away from adverts, right? Let's, let's, let's leave adverts to one side. It is the problem as well. Even Let's just imagine we're in a, utop- a non-advertising utopian YouTube environment, right? Is the problem the fact that you can you can only film a landscape photography vlog in one way you can't you can't sort of i've tried i've tried really hard i've thought right okay i'm going to i'm going to film it differently i'm going to do something different but you always tend to go back to walking past the camera a little bit of b-roll talking about the shot doing this cuz you you know i want to do like you know rolling over you know <laughs> gorilla landscape photography it, landscape photography by its own by its very essence by its very nature there's only a couple of ways you can film it and I'm not saying that everyone walks past the camera but you can't make a fast paced landscape photography vlog they're slow paced they're gentle they're talking about the shot and the shot is king do you disagree Manny? go, go on just completely yeah it's yeah. all about conditions and weather it's all more about, more about the environment it's, yeah, you yeah. can include more dra- drama into your video if you're on yeah, but you can. Edge. Yeah, but you can only get Mountain so. Ridge. You can only get so much drama. You can only get such a to to a certain level of drama in a landscape photography vlog. Okay, there's only so much drama you can build to taking a picture of the landscape. Okay, it's not like there's a bomb. At, no, no, but it's not like there's a bomb about to go off, or it's not like you know, uh, I don't know, 10 seconds until someone gets murdered, it's, I'm going to take a picture of a, I'm going to take a picture of a landscape. There's only so much. If you're on a mountain ridge and you've got the grandiose music going on, Oh, I'm just going to take a picture. It's not like well, that. Well, you are, no, but you are. You're that's all you're doing the... at the end of the day. Yeah, but that's but you what. Are, but, it's, but do you not think that it's all landscape, portrayal. all landscape? That there's so many vlogs now. There's so many vlogs. I know what you say. And there's but so it is many personal. vlogs. And it's, it, of course, it's personal. I'm not saying that we don't add our own personal drama in, and I'm not saying that the better f- vloggers amongst us are the ones that bring out that drama and the ones that bring out that emotion and get us in, you know. Uh, involved in it and invested in it but what i'm saying is is there's only a certain amount you can do with a landscape vlog formulaic yeah it's 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 formulaic exactly there's at the the end of the day Uh, at the end of the the formula is arrive at a place get to the location take the shot show the shot come home that's it there isn't anything else other than that and when you've got 50 people, 100 people doing that, that's one thing. But when you've got a 1,000 people doing that every week and, and you know, a new vlogger comes out and what's the first thing you see? The first thing you see from a new vlogger? Driving the car. Driving the car. <laughs> you know, journey, 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 journey to, yeah, making a cup of coffee. Three opening years. The, opening the Three blue, years getting the, put, oh, taking the stuff yeah, out. I haven't noticed thing. that a long time though. Uh, rocking up, rocking up in a fifty grand camper van, asking for three quid for a cup of coffee. <laughs> I've done Brilliant. all them apart from the coffee. Brilliant. No, but it, it is. It's we've all done it. It's like a rite of passage. The first thing you do is you record your journey. I've never done the it. The second thing is, oh no, I you coffee. must have recorded your journey. You must have. You must have had a dash cam on of you driving to the place. Everyone does. Yeah, when that's first right. yeah, 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 yeah. No, but you know what I mean. It's it's you've got. Uh, I think what differentiates between the masses is your personality. Hey, we're getting a bit feisty. J- Jamie, come on, man. It's breaking up. Well, hang on. What, what's Jamie got to say? Because Jamie, Jamie ain't said a great deal. Come on, Jamie. Come, on, Jamie, Jamie, come into lad. the conversation, mate. What do you reckon? I think that the the issue we've got isn't... Well, we're not going to talk about mid-roll ads or ads the rest of it. The issue we've got is that our... Are our subscribers getting bored with watching the same thing all the time from landscape photographers? So, you know, you've got different pockets of vlogs. You've got the tutorial stuff, which has been done to death. If you want to know seven ways that to do that or ten ways that to do that, you can put it in YouTube and it will come up. Yeah, and you've got the location ones, which are slightly more interesting because people want to know. Okay, I've, I want to go to the Lake District, I want to go to Snowdonia, I want to go to the Fens, you know, where do I visit? Then you'd type it into so there, interesting. 
but then you've got the experience ones, haven't you? There, you know, what do what do landscape photographers experience when they're out? A cracking sunrise or sunset or some really moody skies. But there, you can't predict those. So where where is it going in terms of making a vlog more interesting to a subscriber? And do you have, therefore have to be just lucky with getting conditions? Because I'm not going to make a two ish vlog, and if I'm honest. I'm not going to keep traveling around the bloody country and making location vlogs. I want to make vlogs that are about my experiences out in the landscapes. And sometimes they might just be a crappy, a, you know, crappy experience. And therefore, you know, people aren't going to watch that. So does it limit, you know, how many different types of excitable vlogs you can put out there? And I think that's where we're going to get to. We're going to get so many people putting stuff out there. And what are the people going to watch? Because that, a lot of it's already my, been that done. That was my whole point, Jay. It really was because I think you know people get invested uh, in someone. They think oh, I really like their style, really like their vlogs. But you know they might like me for example. Say I only put out one vlog every fortnight. So in between that, you know they're going to watch somebody else and then somebody else, and then they're going to probably forget. Oh, I forgot that Darren was even making that video. But now I've discovered so and so, and all of a sudden there's like they might have subscribed to like five hundred people. And it's just it's it's just nature, you know. People kind of get distracted, what and then a, you know. What a wonderful time we live in! It's, it's have, fantastic. To but have what I'm five hundred choices, subscribers, people, content creators. What a wonderful, wonderful world we live in. I go do you know? You, do you, do you sorry, know what go I was going to say? The what main thing. Do you know? Do you know what stood out for me? It was go like on, a John. lightning bolt today. Is, ding, 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 I knew you were going to do Jake Bug. I knew you were going to do Jake Bug. Sorry, go. Like, lightning bolt. Yeah. yeah, that was a Jake Bug. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> art, art, to be an artist, to be a photographer. The people I love and watch the most are the people who are creating something that's got this is the key. This is Story. the key. Story. But the story's part of this other word. Bad day. I'm a bad the day. other word. The story's good. Heart. Emotion. Emotion. <laughs> Alternatively, you can do a tap dance on every 3,000 foot peak. <laughs> you could that. have I'm a channel. I would. I'd be subscribed Shall like that. I'm going to buy some tap shoes and do and the you have obscure to location German tap dance series. German Ledlhausen. <laughs> I think the thing is, I think the thing is, we're, we're all we. The reason I think the reason Darren's asked this question is because we we've all as as vloggers, we're all at a stage now where we've been going now for a good two or three years, and I think that what happens is, is if you look at say the F four guys, you you innovate, you start now to innovate, you get to a point where you go right. Well, how many more times can I yeah. walk from A to B? How many more times can I go and take this picture? How many more times can I talk you through my settings? F eleven, one sixtieth of a second ISO one hundred. How many more times can I stand in front of a lake or a tree or a, a mountain? You know, you just kind of and for for us, I know for us, it's it's different every time because we're enjoying it. But for viewers, you're just regurgitating the same stuff. It, it, it it's just we're looking for some we're looking for the next thing and I, I remember think that's what happens I remember when I first started and I consciously remember and and this is the thing you're talking about now and there's a lot of people but I remember when I first started doing it your fault Gary everyone here included I thought I can't do what they're doing I tried it and I was like nah, this is I'm not doing this I can't do this this isn't me this doesn't feel right I'm a talking head, and, and it's your fault again, it's James. I was going to do some more arty stuff, where it was more about the environment, the emotion, less of me talking, but it quickly become quite obvious that I needed to talk, and I needed to be me, and, and be very much me. Okay, well, look, following on from is YouTube dying, but... If you could earn seven, if you could be guaranteed seventy five percent of your current income, would you quit your job and become a full time professional photographer? No, because twenty five percent of my wage goes on photography. So no, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> could you not? Could you not 
streamline your your life. Why should you? Why should you? No, because I, I like for talent. work, play separate. It's got to be totally separate to me. Totally really? Separate. Yeah, I, I, I lose. I put more pressure on myself to deliver the goods. I don't know. I've always had that mindset. It's got to be separate. Uh, I could easily. Mm. Yeah, easily. me too. Me it's too. like an escape, really. And yeah, but you could escape no. seven days a week, and you don't so have to go out seven days. A you'd but you don't have to. You'd accept you to do that for less money, for less when when you're being an artist. Yeah, I suppose that's what all artists do, isn't it? That's why I ended up doing graphic design. Mm. The destruction of art. Say that again. Oh, I'm pissed. <laughs> 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 oh, no, 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 you're right, because you, you're jobbing an artistic role anyway. <laughs> Not autistic. Dear, oh dear. You're always an artist. Can you let me know, Gary, when this is going on tomorrow? <laughs> it depends what stage of, of life you're at, Darren. I think if you've got no, less yeah, responsibilities, yeah, exactly. if you have kids have grown up and left yeah, home, if you're getting right. close to retirement, yeah, no, all but of the hang things on, that, that I no, am. no, no. But the question was oh. pretty specific. If you could, uh, if you could guarantee seventy five percent of your income, so all your responsibilities, as long as you can take care of those within seventy five percent, any other factor is not relevant. Oh well, the it question is. is no, with seventy five percent of your income, could you still pay your bills, put your kids through school, all the stuff? I could. Would you then? No, that's well, in that, that no, case, well, the James, no. James made a good point because I couldn't. You know, going back to in my twenties, mm. I couldn't take a. I, I couldn't take a twenty five percent pay cut. Mm. But but now but you didn't the age ask I'm, about would you in your twenties. We're asking about how we are now. Yeah, but James, so raised, it's, it's raised a yes a good no. Point. Yeah, right, well, let's, yes, talk, no, right, well, let's sure. talk about now then. Okay, like the six of us, the ages yeah. that we're at now, where we are in our life now. Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> Open the box. <laughs> if we're going to have a hypothetical, it's got to be objective. <laughs> okay, okay, go on then, go on then. i got no yeah. opinion. It's a no <laughs> for me. It's a no for me. <laughs> Would you not do it, Mally? What a, why not? You would rather go into your office every day than go out onto a fell. I'd sooner be happy and working hard and providing for my family with enough money to get by. I don't have a pension. I have nothing in the bank. You take twenty five percent off me. You on the street. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so economically you can't afford it. So yeah, that's that's yeah. okay. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, what about what about if let's change it around then? What about if you could get a hundred percent of your current income? Would you do it then? Because I yeah. wouldn't. If I had a full time job, I had a full time job that I was enjoying. Say I went back to working. Uh, like I know I'm, I know I'm not currently working. Before I went back to working as a finance officer at the council, would I give that up to become a landscape photographer full time or a f- professional photographer full time? No. Yes, I wouldn't. I wouldn't well, either. Yeah, but I'm wait, a minute. I wait a minute. Wait a minute, though. The rules change. You're guaranteed that money. The rules exactly. change. Exactly. You don't have to do... I mean, don't do that. You don't have to be... Um, you don't have to follow any rules. You can be a landscape photographer and get paid your full money. You yeah, don't need not, to chase. Yeah, you don't need talking, to hustle. Well, no. We're not... To, we're not. You can't just Hold say on. someone's going to come and give you 100% of your money saying, every week yeah. and you do exactly what you're doing. saying. No, that's what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, and you don't have to do anything for it. You still no, you have to do landscape like, photography. Like, you have to do what you do, which is love, art, what, just passion, go out of the emotion, weekend. story. No, 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 you go out you every day. Change. You're changing I'll the question there. Every day. Day. You're changing the question every. there. Because so my, my changing, life, changing like my life at the moment, I have a job where I involve a lot of people. So that my job is my social interaction with other people. My landscape photographer is my escape. So I like to be on my own. But a big proportion of my life, I like to be with people as well, working. If you take that element away, no. then my life isn't balanced, basically. That's why I feel. Mm. 
being realistic, if you're going to run it as a business, you're going to spend 75% of your time doing paperwork, chasing clients, uh, no, no, and no, no, trying no. to keep the business going. No, get no, you no, off. no. Get you you get 100% of your money. You never said anything about you having to be a business. You get that money. You can be a landscape photographer. My you didn't say anything the, about the question. Was, you didn't say anything would you about swap. Would you? Would you? If you could. Get, my point was, if you could get seventy-five percent of your income. Admittedly, some people say they can't afford to so do that. So what have that. you got to do to get that seventy-five percent? Just not just, just, out, just, not just, just go out trot five, along to the fells and take a few shots. Out, yeah, go out five days. Is that what we do? That's job. not professional, though, is it? I think you'll find. Well, hang on, hang on. So swap your going out five days a week. Rather than going to work five days a week, that was my question. What, so, so if no you're saying you could get seventy-five percent of your income carrying out your hobby, yeah, that's what he's yeah, saying. Because that's no longer convert your job. That's no whatever longer becoming a professional hours. photographer. So if you don't no, 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 forty hours you're... a week at work, you do forty hours a week in landscape photography. Yeah, but being a professional is not just about going out and. Taking that's pictures that you enjoy. Well, that's the job, though. That is the yeah. job. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's so, not so, that so, well, that's so the, the job, question. Yeah, so the question is, if you if you look at seventy five percent of your salary today, could you be a lands or or seventy five percent of your income, whatever it is that you get today, could you be a landscape photographer for that money? And would you want to be a landscape photographer for that? What just go? If someone said, "I'll give you seventy five percent of your money, you can just go out whenever you want and take pictures for fun." No, no, no. But you still got to earn. It. You've then week. got to be a landscape photographer and earn that seventy five percent salary. Yeah, but that well, that's what I'm saying though. Earning the earning can the I money. Can I suggest we screen the question yeah. before we earning start. earning the money? <laughs> I was going to say we I haven't thought, thought was... the question through at all. That's all we're discussing. Easy. Terms and conditions. Earning money through the landscape, terms and conditions. Earning money through landscape photography isn't going out seven days a week taking pictures. No, it's it about is. chasing it's clients, getting. Yeah, no, but they're no, no. not. That's the point. It's not. No. That's it. You've got James, to still earn it. Jane, then that Jamie's got it. Seventy-five percent of your wage is not your for your case. hobby. It's, you've got the. There's a hundred percent of your wage. Go and do what you want. Cheers. See ya. I'm going taking some pictures. I read. I read his question is that if you could change your job and become a landscape photographer <laughs> and therefore at the salary at seventy five percent that you're earning now, would you do it? Thank That's you, Jay. Did. Jesus, it wasn't difficult. Was it? Was it? Really it really wasn't. wasn't, wasn't a give difficult me answer. Question. I'm just having fun now. Yeah, winding me up. I'm just having fun. That's what you're just doing. No. You're just trying to wind me up. Because <laughs> I wound you up earlier, so you're trying to wind me up back. <laughs> Gary, I don't work like that. Now really? you know yeah. I don't well, work like that. Well, it seems like you are tonight. I am not. I would never do that to you, no. darling. Ever. The thing is, you make the assumption that we don't like our day jobs. I, I like Where's my Dave day job. Dave Where's Dave gone? Dave gone. 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 Yeah. That was Mr. 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 Ghost of Griff. He appeared like the ring, that woman that's going <laughs> to. That was amazing. Wow. He's got a really nice he's sunset going yeah. on there. Really, really. really. no, he's back. Ah, look at that face. We love oh. that face. That cheeky grin. Do you oh. know what? We should just all get the worst internet and sit here for an hour and laugh our chunks off. I, I think, think we've done it tonight, it. mate, actually. With the, this got to be the worst internet <laughs> episode oh, ever. Oh, dear. Not on your... your are you, uh, Dave, you're back this? again now. Oh, no, he's, is he? Yes. Yeah, he's back. I he's was back just taking a picture of the sunset because it's yeah. really nice. And normally, I black the windows out. Oh. But I left it open today because there was no light changing. And I looked across and there's a fantastic sunset. But what I was going to say was, I wouldn't take 75% of my income because I enjoy my day job. And I think if you set your life up, like James, in a way where you've got a nice balanced lifestyle, balanced. Yep. the photography as a, as a sideline is terrific. If yeah. that was all you ever did, you'd, you'd very quickly get a bit fed up with it. Yep. Possibly. Poss yeah, possibly. I could, I'm quite happy to go out every day. I think there's different things though I think for me it's not a question of landscape photography I think it would be wonderful if I could if you could achieve a standard a level of professionalism that is of a quality that people would pay you a good wage because you are very very good at your job for me it's always about the, the quality it's not about status it's not about the money it's always about striving to be better it's the same in my daytime job 
it's always about trying to get out something that means something to you but has a connection commercially and with photography to be able to do that for me would be portrait would be weddings would be whatever I could turn me on to but it would have to be good it would have to be professional to warrant to get paid and it and quite handsomely get paid because at the end of the day a creative endeavor is a difficult endeavor it's a tough career to be always giving your best and trying to be as creative as you as you can and that only stems from in here there's a lot of people out there earn a crust by just ticking boxes and getting it just right and getting it professional but do they strive there's another question maybe later on down the day at the end of it i feel a pressure on myself because i want to strive and get better as i get older it never ends a challenge it's a constant challenge like life and i think for me photography is more about an artistry it's more about uh, uh, really trying to be better at what i do and if i could get paid for doing that i would genuinely have to be giving value i would genuinely have to be giving people something that is of a very high standard and that would only come from 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 working 24 7 as much as possible i'm out with my camera all the time i'm holding down a day job i've got family and that is the essence of this question. At the end of the day, you don't get anything for nothing. You have to be good and you have to be at the top of your game. Why? Why can't you just do it because you just enjoy it? I do. I do. I love it. I enjoy it. But the enjoyment for no, me No, but I mean, I you say journey. you've got to work it's 24-7 and all this. Yeah. What's that about yeah. just going out and just enjoying it? Just I relaxing, can't. going out. I can't. And- I can't, well, then, I can't just go out then. and just enjoy it because it's all encompassing. It's all a part of it for me. If I couldn't go out, if I... Right, so we're back to that same thing, Darren. I could quite happily forget everything I've just said and go rock, water, mountain, sky, click. There are people but, doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about that for me. It's about pushing myself. My enjoyment comes from improvement. My enjoyment comes from trying to do yeah, something that I, I totally have an agree. emotional I totally connection. Agree. An emotional connection. I posted a picture the other night of another sodding lawn tree. But do you know what? I, I Do you know where that tree was? Do you know when I met you, James, for the G7X? And we parked up at that roundabout there. That that tree's on that hill there where we parked from Fusethwaite Yeats. Sometimes you go places and people see what they want to see. Don't go places and see what you want to see. And fill your camera with it and fill your life and your heart and your soul with it. And I get you down you're right. It is, but for me, my joy and pleasure comes from really, really trying to do something that's unique to me. And, and, and I, yeah. uh, gents, oh. gents, I've just got to say, what, what, what another episode. I know it's been breaking up. If we can keep half of this in, it's going to be a good episode. Yeah, a lot of passion you sure you A lot of yeah. passion. I, I do apologise tonight. We've been having a few issues with the with the internet connection uh, amongst a few of us, so it may have come across as a bit stilted. But I think we got the point across about most of the things we want to say, and hopefully this would be a you know a reasonable one. There was a lot of passion tonight, so one way or another. So uh, anyway, I just want to say thanks very much uh, to all of you guys who who take the time to watch uh, and listen on the podcast. And uh, yeah, until next week, um, we will see you again really soon. Goodbye. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you there.